The callback pattern is used a lot in Roblox for mouse clicks where it could happen once or zero times or many times. When you're downloading files from the internet, it could take a while and you need to know when it's done, whether it's really soon or sometime in the future. And audio files, when you're waiting for an NPC to be completed talking, either when it's done or when the player skips it, you need to know. And so it's very different style of coding. Instead of you invoking a function, the code actually invokes you, but you don't know when that is. It's sometime in the future. So let me show you an example. We'll create a function here that does some slow work. And what you're passing to the only parameter is a callback. This callback is basically your function. So we're not going to make it do anything fancy. We're going to say undone. This is our function and it takes no parameters. We're done. And so this is we are as an R code. Okay. This would be what you call like a mouse click or audio file done or some internet call. You don't know when it's going to complete. It's impossible for you to predict. But bottom line is whenever you're done, just let me know. Call me back. Let me know when you're done. Okay. So we'll give you some life cycle events here. We'll say print starting. And then we'll wait for three seconds, which is a way to block in Lua. If you don't know, watch this video. It tells about blocking versus non-blocking languages. And Lua is kind of a little bit of both with their coroutine weightness. So this is going to take about three seconds to do its work and then done. When it's finally completed, it'll call our code. So we gave it a function. Take your time. Whenever you're done doing whatever it is you need to do, call us. Okay. So when we start this guy off, we're going to call some work and we're going to pass an on none. So if you remember back to the days of passing function of functions where I print print, right? I pass the print function to print to see what it was. It'll print out a function. This is we're passing a function because functions are values, just like strings, numbers, booleans, tables. You can pass functions to other functions. So this slow work is going to do its thing. And when it's finally done at some point in the future to call our stuff. So this is our code right there. So when we hit run. You'll see the print it's starting and then about three seconds later it's done and then it calls our function, right? The print function. So that's the basics of a callback function.